Hey guys, it's Mr. Stark again at uh, Waterbury Porter and Chester. I wanted to go over a, another cool uh, circuit that is typically used in any place that would require um, maintaining a certain amount of water flow or lack of water. We don't want the water in the building, so we'd have a pump system. And th what this pump system does is it keeps the water, let's just pretend that you had a, uh, a basement that leaked a ton of water and you don't, you don't want all that water to be coming in the building. So this is basically something that would be wastewater treatment or, you know, something of that effect. It's an industrial pump circuit. And if you look at the diagram, this has been modified a little bit, but you're going to be doing this when you come back into lab. And you'll notice that there's some very typical symbols that you've seen. There's a selector switch upper left says on off fs1 is float switch number one float switch number two float switch number three and float switch number four so you've actually got four different float switches 1m represents a pump motor that would pump water out of a container or space pump two is another motor that would pump water out in the event that pump number one couldn't keep up with the amount of water coming in, pump number two would turn on to help pump out twice the amount of water. And then you've got an overload on each of the motors to protect the motor. You have a buzzer, which is nothing more than a horn that goes off at a certain point or time in the circuit when it's an alarm, when you definitely want somebody to hear it. And that alarm is going to go off in the event that you've reached a certain level where you need more help than just the two pump motors and you got a warning light and a reset button that needs a coil to hold that circuit so what I did is I got a controller from an actual uh, business or that needed this whole setup and this is an actual motor control uh, enclosure it's a, a fiberglass enclosure and it's got the indication lights when pump motors are running so if pump motor number one is running a light comes on pump number two a light comes on when the horn goes off uh, you can silence it you can silence the horn but you still have to wait for the indicator light which is up here this is the alarm light that'll flash and when that water gets down below a certain level uh, the light the alarm light will go away and that's kind of a safe bet what I did was I modified this enclosure so that we could simulate it so we don't have float switches here at Porter and Chester with water so what I did was I hooked up a series of single pole switches and the way this is this represents float switch one float switch two float switch three float switch four I've got these wired into this terminal strip, which is basically a, you know, a basic circuit board that allows this uh, system to work with these contactors. So this is a motor contactor, another motor contactor. You might see the familiarity of when I took apart the NEMA starter, it had these contacts that would close. Here you actually see the components closing this is the actual motor starter itself. This goes with this contactor. You've got your three phase feeds coming into the top, your L1, L2, L3. Come out the bottom, T1, T2, T3, which stands for your load. Those loads power up these contactors. And if I needed the feed from the field, this enclosure would be built in a factory somewhere. In the, in the field, we'd take this enclosure and we would have to bring in our feed from the panel L1, L2, L3. Then we'd have to get out to the motor T1, T2, T3 and you can see the same thing for the other one. You've got some other stuff in here I told you about. Most power control enclosures have a transformer so we're tapping off this uh, three-phase voltage to power up a transformer and then the secondary side feeds my low voltage stuff I've got some manual controls, so my control is on, pump number one is on in auto, pump number two is on in auto, 
and auto means that the float switches are basically going to run the circuit. So if I had to simulate this, what I did was I hooked up a 120 volt power cord to the bottom of this enclosure so I can simulate this. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to plug it in so it's in kind of status mode. I may have to put my camera down for a couple instances, but if I walk you through this circuit, I'm going to turn on float switch number one. When we turn on float switch number one, all that does is it brings power to float switch number two. And float switch number two has to activate, which means water level has to hit it in order for uh, motor number one to come on. So I have to hit float switch one and float switch two. Basically the water is coming in here, closing that switch. Too much water and it allows that pump to run. Uh, this FS1 actually empties the entire tank. So it's not so much a start circuit as it is an end circuit. So I'm gonna hit two single pole switches, my FS1, my FS2, and I'll see motor uh, or contactor 1N pull in and you'll see what happens. So this is my flow switch number one. You can see the circuit board turned on. Flow switch number two. And you heard that contactor pull in. So that's this contactor. I'm going to do it again so you can see it. Float switch number one. Pretty much nothing. It's just letting you know that there is water in the tank. Float switch number two gets activated. And now all of a sudden I got my contactor pulling in. And I have some indication. I'll show you what that is after. So I have an indicator light letting me know my pump motor is running. I also going to hit right at this stage of the game pretend I have too much water so right now 1M is running we know because that contactor is pulled in if I hit flow switch number three it's basically saying this pump ain't keeping up with the water flow it's working but we got too much water coming in that's why this float is activated and it's telling another pump to run so I'm going to hit that one and right now the other contactor pulled in the indicator light is on saying we got a we got a warning. I'm gonna silence the horn right now. So we don't have to hear that. So both contactors are pulled in. They're both pumping water in the real world. This is telling people that are might be in that building, look, both pumps are running, and if more water continues to come in the building, we're gonna have a problem. And uh, it's something that's gonna need to be addressed. So that's you know. I could, I could reset this too. And what ends up happening is, uh, in order for this indicator light to go away, if you look at the circuit, the warning light is on right now. The buzzer is actually on too. And the buzzer can be silenced, but the alarm light can't be until the water level drops beyond the level that's acceptable. And that can only be done when these float switches go back into their normal position and you'll see this indicator light is still flashing if I want I could reset you see you've got horn silence alarm reset by pressing that it's letting me know we're good to go the alarm light or the indicator light is now turned off and uh, you can certainly test this to make sure your stuff is running but the cool thing about this circuit is this is an actual circuit that was used in the field uh, an actual board that was yanked out of the field. All the components are pre-wired. You can see how they left a nice little bit of slack so you can open up the panel to the code minimum 90 degrees, which is this actually goes 180 degrees, which is even better. Somewhat neatly tied in. Like I said, I just modified the circuit so I could run it. And I've got another circuit that I'm gonna show you that we built with uh, spare parts that we had kicking around that simulates the exact same thing except with water. So once again, control transformer, terminal strip, and you got your integrated circuit board, a little bit older style, another terminal strip, uh, motor number one contactor, motor number two, you know, starter. Basically, it's a motor starter with a contactor, and uh, that's it. I mean, it's we can make this stuff happen just by yanking this stuff out of the field. So hopefully, you got something out of this, and. Uh, the actual diagram that went with this circuit is right here on this page. So 
It looks different than the diagram I have because I drew this in ladder logic. So here's our, you know, this is our ladder logic. But this would be the same circuit, pump number one, pump number two, pump number three. And you can see that there's the alarm contact, uh, a set of dry contacts, which is auxiliary contacts for other use. You can have other indication. You've got your other controls for test, silence, reset. That's all the stuff on the front of the cover. And, you know, if you wanted to add some more components, you certainly could. Pretty cool. Hope you got something out of this, and I'll see you at the next float switch circuit.